And welcome, everybody. Yeah, today is Tuesday, not Monday. Tuesday. We're going to be here from 8 to... Uh, oh, now we have one. And there we go. <laughs> there we go. It keeps moving on me. There we go. Yeah, we'll be here till uh, about 10.15 today. We'll try and take a break around 9 o'clock. Anyway, trading the foreign exchange uh, on margin carries a high level of risk and may not be suitable for all investors. The high degree of leverage can work against you as well as for you. Before deciding to invest in foreign exchange, you should carefully consider your investment objectives, level of experience, and risk appetite. The possibility exists that you could sustain a loss of some or all of your initial investment, and therefore you should not invest money that you cannot afford to lose. You should be aware of all the risks associated with the foreign exchange trading and seek advice from an independent financial advisor if you have any doubts. This is a live trading room. It is for educational purposes only. No financial advice or recommendations will be provided. Any trades taken during the live session is not a recommendation or suggestion that you should also do the same. Past performance is not indicative of future results. Do not trade money that you cannot afford to lose. And before trading live, always operate with a written trade plan that identifies rules for entry, exit targets, and risk management. I mean, now we got that out of the way. Let's go to the charts. We have an alert at, uh, let me get to my chart here. And we have an alert in progress right now as we speak. It's just start, now starting to try and break out of the top of the wedge. It's the US yen. We had the alert at 645 this morning, East Coast time. And like I said, it's just now breaking out of the top. I'm looking for a close above the D at this point in time. I actually took it down here when the moving average has crossed over. And so actually I am out of my one position already. And now we're looking for the target price of being up here somewhere around the 105.93 area. With this little candle right here that came up, closed above, it closed above my B, which is a secondary wedge, which I'll get to that later. And right now it's closed. It's right now it's inside. Now it's re coming back to retest the zone. Any time in here is an okay time to try and take this thing long. The... Uh, our uh, RCS tool says that the US dollar is strong to compared to the yen by three. We have a three spread on the five minute. We have a three spread on the one minute as it's trying to break through. And like I said, the target, we have a, a zone, a supply zone right up here. Also, we have a Fibonacci line right here at the 106 level. So that would be the initial target. Um, if it, once we get, uh, that would be the ultimate target at this point because you'll probably get a bounce off of that area. <clears throat> right now, we're just gonna see if this thing's gonna break. It's been grinding away for the last hour or so, trying to uh, <clears throat> break through the top of the wedge. <clears throat> uh, the way I drew this one, I drew this one, this one's uh, kind of an interesting one. Like I said, I'm starting to draw the wedges a little bit more, a little bit bigger, basically, trying to find the, pivot highs, pivot lows, but also when we had this alert, you can see this is a pretty strong move coming up. So I was looking for where I could get a secondary wedge inside the bigger wedge so that this is really the area where it's playing right now is in between the C and the D area. So when I drew the wedge, I came all the way back over here to uh, yesterday's pivot low yesterday. It was an ascending wedge. So I wanted to be able to have my A started low with the C, with at least a, I want at least a positive uh, move up. If I had the A here, over in this area, it's actually a little bit of a, it's, it's not quite, I don't think it's a, it's about, about even, I guess you could say. It's got a little bit of a, uh, yeah, I'd say it's pretty much right even. So that's pretty much flat. So I thought I'd give this a little bit more of a, a little bit more of a slope on it. And I'm still, here's, so here's my anchor, here's a hit, because I'm always looking for that me, middle hit between my A and C, and the middle hit between my B and D line. Try and get the B up the pivot high, tuck the D in as close to the, to the uh, alert where it was. And that was my main wedge, the orange one. Then I'm looking for, but with this real strong move where the alert came in, I'm looking to see where up here can I find another secondary wedge to see where it's going to break out the bottom to maybe catch it 
from up here down to this area, or if it's going to break to the upside to go up into the, the supply zone, which is right up here where the B was. And I'm just looking pretty much uh, of where the strong move down came from. And it was right up here for the B. We had almost one, two, three, four, five 15 minute candles. That's an hour and 15 minutes with a straight down move with no blue candles in between. So that's a strong move down. That's a strong area of uh, supply. So I'm just gonna take the wick of that area and move it on over and looking at using that for my target. You can see that's also right up oh, there. We go. Let me get this back up to here. And you can see where that target is. It's right at a fib line. So that's that's that gives us uh, more reinforcement that that is probably going to be a good zone. Come over to my one minute chart. I'll expand things out. You'll see where my where the orange, the bigger wedge is right up here. And you can see how this thing was forming a secondary wedge from the uh, well so I took it from the here's my here's where the a was now this is still the let me see scrunch this up a little bit this is still the bottom of the main wedge but you can see where this is where the slope started coming we started getting uh, the higher highs and higher lows and so what we're looking for is we're looking to see where we start getting here's a low here's a high have a couple hits along the way before the alert. So that validates this whole trend line right here. So I mean, technically I can move my C all the way back over to here. And you can see where I have the anchor, a hit, another hit, here's our C, this is after. But right now we're, you can see it's making lower highs and higher lows. So as it makes lower highs, I'm gonna move my secondary wedge to, to the lower high, made a higher low, so I'm gonna move this over to here and then you can see where it made a another lower high and another higher low and you see right here is where it started to break and it's right where the moving averages broke so i've got all my moving averages uh, uh converging i've got a blue candle which broke over this red candle over here and so now my moving averages are now all in the right order and we're taking a run for the run for the goal line up here and that's where I got in up at this area. Here's my spread. But I got in on the blue candle that closed above this red candle here. And as you can see where we're getting the lower high, higher low, and then we have the break. And that's where we are right now. And now it broke the, the upper, the main wedge, and it's kind of retesting this area right in here. And it's just, again, it's been a really slow grind. It just ground, it was grinding away all for, from, Oh, pretty much from 7.30 to 8 o'clock, it wasn't going more than you know, four or five pips on either side of this, uh, where this wedge was. So this is where it was starting to consolidate, broke out, and now we're looking at, you can see there's almost like another little tiny wedge developing. Here's the move up, and you can see that right up in here, you have a high, a low, a lower high, higher low. That's another, you no. Know, mini wedge right up in here. And that's what we're looking for. We're looking for those little uh, patterns that show you where it's going sideways, stalling, and see if it's gonna break. And so we have this little spot right here. And now we're just gonna see if it's going to uh, maintain, if it breaks out of the bottom of uh, this, you may want to consider getting out and thinking it's gonna maybe reverse. And it's struggling to get through the top of this. Now it could have just, taken off and just shot right up but right now it's still is finding some some buyers and sellers right in this area so that's where we are right now it broke out of the top of the wedge didn't really go anywhere barely closed above the candle where my main wedge was on the d and here's the can the blue candle that that's as high as it ever closed until right here at the a so we did get a higher close which is a good thing now the question is is it going to maintain is it going to break to the bottom and retest the 62 on the one minute, or is it going to break to the top and go for our target or our, our zone, which is up in here? And that's where we are. Any questions so far? That's an awful lot for early in the morning, but that's, that's where, where it is. 
And yeah, that's so, a mouthful. Yeah, so it, we don't have a lot of times to debate these things. Once I don't want to get everybody to at least see what's happening as it's happening. So, um, Matt, do you have any comments, questions, Eva? Any comments or questions about this one? Uh, yeah, I actually have a question came in the Q and A from uh, uh, Beach Panda. Uh, he says, just when I'm learning how to properly draw Hawkeye wedges, we're now drawing sub wedges. How many pigeon wedge levels and over what period of life of the potential trade should we look to draw? Um, let's just say this. Uh, how, how should I answer that question? I'm not, not really drawing the wedges any differently than I have all along. What I'm finding out as I become more and more familiar with trading wedges myself I'm finding out that there's, there, you'll find out there's inside the main wedge, if we can get a earlier entry before the break of the top, what, was I find, what I was finding out is as I was drawing these before, by the time we got the break, a lot of times we were just barely getting our five pips and it was reversing on us and stopping us out on the other side and then reversing, coming back and stopping us out. And what I was finding out that on this one minute chart with these, moving averages, it was giving us an earlier entry by using the moving averages and finding that secondary wedge on this one minute chart to try and get that earlier entry just so we can get into the trade before it breaks out of the top and which oftentimes gives us uh, that ability to take that profit before we, because oftentimes when it breaks, even like you see where this A broke, it broke and I mean, it's still well within but we also want to see where is it going to start turning around? Where is it going to be finding a spot where it's going to give us some problems as far as uh, making that target of ours? And I'm finding out that if we can get find these secondary wedges inside the 15-minute as we draw it, uh, we have a better shot at getting that, that target price. I don't know. Does that answer your question? No. Uh, Beach Panda? Yes, it does, he says. Yeah, okay, good. Um, yeah, I mean, so really, I'm, I'm not really drawing them any differently. I'm still looking for that, uh, you know, they, the three, in order to validate, for me, in order to validate a trend line or the bottom of a wedge or the top of a wedge, I want to see that middle hit between where my anchor is, which is in this case the A, and where before my, and so right here, so right here I have a, a nice trend line here. A, a hit, and the C. And you also see that this pullback past where the alert was, it still validates this line. So as long as it keeps validating it, now I'm looking for lower highs and higher lows. Well, here's a low, here's a high, here's a higher low. And it's validated and it validated and it pushed back up, up. So now I, it's still, so my trend line is still valid. On the top part, I have a hit. If I come all the way over here to let me get on the 15 minute chart. Maybe see this a little bit better. On the 15 minute, we have the, the B. Now we could look, again, we're looking for validation. I, I could move my B over here. Now the question is, is it, is it do I have a, a three point hit from B to where my D is? Well, this one is a little bit more than I would really like. It's, it's still, let's see what's the, range of that's 106.03 to 10. Okay, basically that's a three pip range. Still, I would say that's still a valid hit. So you have an anchor, you have a hit, a little bit of a breach, but still valid. And you have another anchor. And so that validates that trend line. But you're seeing as this thing's playing inside the wedge, you had this real strong move up, which is where the alert was. We can't ignore these lower parts. So that's why I draw them a little bit bigger. And now I'm looking for where this strong move up is. I can, I'm looking for something that's given me a, a reason to say, okay, it's time to get in here again, to look for that secondary pullback. And this is really where that pullback was. If you look at, here's a low. And here's the lower low. That's why I put it there. We have the D, which is right where I'm gonna put my B, just put it right on top of it, same spot. And now I'm seeing I have another little slope coming on up as we as we come. And so you have a nice little trend line right here. Here's an anchor, here's a hit, and here's a, a lower high. Here's a higher higher low. 
and then we now we have the break and so that's where you can and as you look at this area right in this little area right in here if you look on your one minute you'll see that's where our moving averages were showing us where the crossover was coming in and all you're doing is you're just you're you're focusing down focusing down again you're looking for the a low lower high higher low and now and at this point we're looking for the break well we had the crossover of our moving averages right inside of this and with, and everything else was saying there's still a strong move to the upside so uh, that was one reason why because it's just by getting in here now my stop really if it breaks the bottom of this my stop is going to be right below here i only have a couple pips stop and the other thing is is i have my 13 moving average and my 13 uh, exponential and my 62 exponential off my 15 minute chart is laying right here. So we had this one came down and invalidated validated the yellow 62 or the 15, 13 minute uh, exponential off the 15 minute chart. Nice bounce off of that. And that gives you a, a good confirmation that as it breaks through the moving averages here, you have room to go to the upside. Is it all you're really doing is just trying to uh, get more and more precise, more and more, find those those patterns that will give you that confirmation. And the tighter the pattern you can get, the, the tighter stop you can use. And then once you get the break, now it's the question, is this thing gonna hold? There's still, so now you're looking at, it's making a higher high, higher low. So it's starting to, now it's starting to trend. And as long as this wedge can hold, as long as this trend line can hold, you can still stay in this trade. And that's the way I'm playing that's this one. And I'm still looking at the fits to be my target. It's my seven pip target up here. It came very close as I was talking. It came very close to hitting that. And um, that's where we are right now. So now we wait for it to go back. And, and, now, we, and now we wait for, let's see if it's going to hit our target. But you can see where it came up a nice, nice move up. Didn't quite get my target. And uh, came back, retested the wedge. So right now you have, there was, this was the wedge that broke, came back and retested it, this little mini wedge right here. So the main wedge is still valid. And now it's coming up to try and hit our target here. And we'll see if it does. They said this is our ultimate target up here. That was based off of where we had the uh, the B, uh, the B hit on the uh, our main wedge. It helps us find our target our target areas. Hey, Ruben, welcome. Ruben's in the room. He says hey. he's not going to be able to stay the whole session though. Oh, good morning, Ruben. This is the only alert we had this morning. There was one at 4.45 this morning uh, on the Aussie US. After this one's done, we can take a look at that and see how that one's playing out. I said, this one was kind of, this was kind of a grab. You can just look at the price action inside where the wedge was, where the, the main wedge. Just see this, and you can just see where this trending, trending, but it's like lower highs, higher lows. Get the break break at the wedge and now it's taking off. Now it's starting to trend and it'll probably keep trending up until it gets to this area right here. Came up right up to where my target was and couldn't quite close it out. Let's see if it can still make another push up. Matt, do you have anything to say or any comments? No, I like that. I, I like how you um, how you do that, and the um, and, and you're doing a lot of what I'm doing. And I would agree that when I when we originally started, we tried to draw them as tight as we could, and going through uh, a couple hundred at this point, we found that if you go back further, um, you can get a really solid like trend line. Um, either from like a couple, uh, sometimes as far as like a day back, 
is uh, where I'll put the the original uh, trend line. And once it finally breaks that trend line, just like kind of similar to what we have on UJ here, once it breaks that trend line, that's a pretty good sign. The odds are pretty high that it's going to go in that direction for a little bit. So you, you can see like right now, this is basically it's trending right now on this. It's on a one minute chart. It's trending. We have a high, low, higher, high, higher, low, higher, high, higher, low, higher, high, higher, low, higher, high. And we're going to see if it can come here and, and take this. So uh, we'll get our target. See if we can get our target. Yeah. I'm right now, it's just, fo it, it just following this trend line right up here all, until once this thing breaks. Then we know that maybe the trade's over. This is how you can try and get, catch a few more extra pips on these things. Right. <clears throat> I came right up to that. If you look over here, see if you can find where my target is. See if we can find out where uh, how that looks on like a higher time frame or a five-minute chart and see if there's something there that we can see that we can... Let's go over to the 15 minutes and see if there's something in between where I have that supply zone. So right up in here, <clears throat> this candle right here, there's a little wick right in here, and this is about where it broke. So we have, if we take this down, you can take it right to this wick. You can take it to the top of this candle. So this is actually a supply zone right here. where, And you can see we're starting to struggle a little bit. As we pull this out, head came down, and you had this, nice, this one little wick right in here as this was, came down. So that's pretty much where is things starting to struggle between this candle, the top of this candle, and the wick of this one right below it. And you can see where it's just grinding its way through that thing. But once it can close above, if it can close inside this, uh, it's probably going to go on up to hit this area, which again is the this is where that violation, uh, that violation of the trend, I mean, just sort of wicked up in there. But that's the area that, uh, that's pretty much the area that we're looking at. We have the nice, we're getting another, we still have eight more minutes before this blue candle is going to close on the 15 minute. Mm -hmm. So it still could work its way up in there. But this is the target that this is the area that we're looking at. This blue, this candle right there, is the one we're looking at. See if it can close in, above that. If it can close above that, then this should be the next area of uh, for it to come in. But we're gonna have to wait eight more minutes on this 15-minute candle to see if it's gonna do that. You can see it came right up to that seven pip where my target was. Came right up, but it couldn't break through it. It's got it's got to break through by 1.3 pips in order to close that uh, hit close that target out by itself. Now the question do you want to no wait or do you want to just kind of close it out and just say I think I'm just going to get out of this trade and be done. <coughs> Come back over to the 1 minute chart. And look at the price action on that. We have our trend line here. Let's widen these out a little bit. And we're going to see if this trend can hold. Actually, here's the anchor. Here's a hit. Here's a hit. Here's a hit. Came back down, near hit. And so it's still respecting this trend line, still respecting the top of the other wedge. And as you see, as it gets closer to the top where it's going to start turning, you're going to start seeing where it's going to develop a secondary angle oftentimes a little steeper than the first one. You can see like right now, this one is starting to get a little bit steeper angle pulling away from this. But as soon as it, but then when it breaks, you see right here is another little secondary wedge. As you, as this thing's trending, it draws these little wedges, high, lows, 
consolidates, and then breaks again. And these are the candles you're looking at as being your reference. This, I mean, here's a nice big red candle, which would be a little bit of concern, the fact it pulled up and came straight back down, retested it, tried to get everybody stopped out, and now it's making another run again. But you can see right here, if you as you hone in on these, you have a little another little the little wedge. If it breaks that B area, we may be looking at trying to uh, either add to a position if you still think it's going to go long or you start looking at uh, protecting yourself, protecting your profits. Yeah, what I like is you still got all the hull moving averages are in the uh, position that you would say it would keep on going up. Um, it looks like that might be a pretty big pullback, but you see the 513.62 are spreading out as well. It tried to break and cross a little bit earlier uh, before it broke the wedge, like down a little bit. You see where it tried to cross, and it didn't. It just pushed itself upwards, so there's still some... I don't know, it just seems like there's still a little bit of gas in it. It just looks like a pullback to me. But Yeah. And that's and right now we did get the close above where my blue line was, which is all the way over here. Uh, it was reference to a, a higher close. Or th that was the close from back uh, from the ground where the B on this uh, trend line was. And uh, but we got the break right here is where we had the break, the close, the break of the close right up here off the D. This was the entry from the wedge to be able to get in with the close above that. Did have a little pullback, and that was like 90 to. That's only three. This is only three pip pullback right here. So, like I said, this thing still has some gas to the upside. I'm still looking at the fact we got the close. Uh, I'm looking at this still looks like a, a pretty valid target up here. We put our and we have our fib lines our and here's our blue fib line right up here just above this zone right here one last little push now some sellers in there <clears throat> And, and now we're talking. And, and that was a trade. And probably still even has more, um, depending if you just want to. If someone wants to stretch the trade a little bit more, you can follow the one-minute haul. It'll get you just a little, little sliver, generally. Um, so it all it all depends if you want to try that. I, I like the five minute haul, but you're gonna have to take a pullback during that move to be able to get most of that. So I'll take this off here. You can see where you have all these like I said, I'd like to look and see where the wicks are. And here was a nice big wick, came over, ran into another wick. That's the top of the wick and that runs into a body. And here's your free run, here's your racetrack right up here coming up to the top where the next wick starts. And this is the, your candle where you're, and there's just a very tiny little wick there. So which makes me really think that this thing has the, could have the steam to go all the way up to where these wicks are right here, which is also where this thing validated the, uh, the trend line. We could take a little bit of patience to get to that, to this point. Oh, we got a huge, um, huge question from Mr. Panda here. In the example, the wedge alert came out several hours ago. As time went forward, a secondary wedge was drawn within the first one. The London market overlap merged into the New York market, and now the UJ is still moving in an upwards direction. 
I go way, way back for price action. Would there be any time frame event to look for a new target and an additional wedge to be drawn for an additional confirmations or gains? Um, I'm so I just want to make sure that you did. Some people didn't take it out of uh, context. I'm not doing my price analysis from way, way like back. Um, I'm just looking for a trend line. I'm going as far back as I can to make the trend line uh, have valid hits. So, um, like, I'm not gonna, I'm not looking for breaches. Um, I'm just looking to make make things make sense. Um, and it's hard to explain. <laughs> um, it's hard to explain without um, visually. I'm not sure I totally understand the question, but let me let me try and see if I can uh, bring some light to the question. Yeah. If, if you have, if you're going, f we in this room when we trade, we're only going for five to seven pips, and we're doing that because one, we're keeping a very tight stop, which allows us to take a larger position size. Uh, you can, so we're basically, if you're only going for five or seven pips, there's no reason or do, it doesn't really make a lot of sense to go back into a, a four hour daily or even a one hour time frame uh, if you're trying to just get uh, scalp out a few pips in a very short period of time because all it's going to do is going to say, oh, the higher time frame says it's uh, moving down, but you're going to get a lot of pullbacks. And actually, we're doing is we're playing the pullbacks of a bigger move. And so if you go to too high of a tar uh, time frame target, all it's going to do is skew your perception of what's uh, what is to be. And so uh, that's when we were finding out that by staying on like a 15 minute chart as being your higher time frame and scaling all the way down to a five or a one minute for those minute entries, you can get those five or seven pips with those higher uh, targets and you can get in and get out of the trade without having to wait for hours and hours for your targets to be hit as you would as if you were a swing trading where you'd be looking at no, no, uh, days and sometimes weeks and months to be able to get your trade. We're looking again in and out within, for the most part, once we enter the trade, we're in and out within about 25, 30 minutes is, uh, the, is the norm. Uh, and that way we can you know, get our, our five pips, seven pips with a lot size. It gives us like a 2% target for the day and then you're done for the day. And that's how we trade in this room. There's a lot of different methods of trading with different time frames, and they all work. Just the question is, what is your trading style? What is your, your risk appetite? I don't know, if, does that help answer the question? But if you go to too high of a time frame, all it does is uh, it plays with your head to the fact that, oh, it's in, uh, because what you're really looking to is what range is this thing trading in? And you want, you want to try and catch the, that small portion inside or just as it breaks to the top of it, you're just trying to catch that one little portion of it to be able to hit your target uh, with a tight stop. And that's one reason why I'm liking using these moving averages on the one minute chart because I'm finding out that with them in this zone, I mean, this all from this D to C to D range, you're looking at uh, pip wise, you're looking at 31 pips or we're only trying to grab seven pips of it, but we want to, get that seven pips in in your favorite in your direction, even though it's inside the wedge, but you know that you know that these things are the fact that we had validated the trend lines, you know that there's gonna be a bounce off of that. Even like right here, came right up, bounced right off the D. That's right where the alert came in. Came up, hit the D, stalled right there. But then it finally broke through and now it's taken on up to the next uh, next area. And um I don't know if that helps answer your question or not, but you can go on too. High, I think you can go on too high of a time frame for the type of style of trading that you're doing, um, and uh, it, it doesn't serve you well unless uh, unless you know the higher the time frame, the more pips you're looking at getting, the bigger stops you're looking at needing, and the more time you're looking at taking to be in the trade. Um, I like getting in, I like getting out, and uh, moving on to the next trade wait for the next train to come down the track yeah just so it's clear i don't i very rarely ever take <laughs> uh long long moves um it'll be very short trades 25 30 minutes um i think 
the longest trade I've had in the last little bit was maybe an hour and a half. Um, but other than that, I'm not I'm not looking to sit on the charts all day monitoring one trade or two trades for the optimal exit. I, I find out that if I trade in the eve, if I look at trades in the evening, and we'll, we'll have an evening session again tomorrow night, and you'll find out in the evening sessions, usually after between, oh, say, 7 o'clock East Coast and 1 o'clock in the morning, it'll give you some alerts, and there'll be some valid trades. But you're going to find out you're going to be sitting in those trades for quite a while because of the time that it was uh, generated. I find out that early morning, somewhere between five and 10 o'clock in the morning, I can usually get plenty of uh, trades uh, alerts to uh, get in, get out and be done. And uh, because you have the volatility when you have the, between the London and the New York sessions between that time period uh, where London opens and New York opens, there's a lot of uh, volatility that get you, can get you those seven pip moves, but they all, but they move in, the, in these patterns and we're just trying to identify the patterns and just grab those you know, five or seven pips. Is everybody in the room or is everybody familiar with the uh, pip calculator that we use to determine how, where our, our lot sizes are? And Ruben, I see you have a question. Did we get you, let me see. Oh, Ruben was just saying that he, oh. He got out with five pips. Okay, yeah, and, and you know, five pips, five pips a day will, uh, with a five pips a day is is at, if five pips a day can get you two percent of your account, it's a it's a significant uh, wealth building tool, and you just have to be able to do that every day, and to get five pips every day is not, it's not that hard. Uh, the biggest problem you run into is the that again that uh, BTE indicator that between the ears indicator that we talk about with of the head game to uh, not just take every trade but be selective of the trades look for the setups and keep looking for the same picture over and over and over again. I'm really liking having this bigger wedge and then looking for the crossovers of the moving average to give me a two uh, three or four pips to a target and. That gives me that gives me a buffer. Be, that at least gives me my spread before you ever get to where I would normally take the trade. If you took the trade right here at when it came into the D and you took it out of market order, you probably didn't get filled until up here. So you already gave up two pips. Well, if you can get your two pips down here before it ever gets to you, because if it if it bounced off the C, it's probably going to come up and retest it where the D was. So, and like actually here, if you can look at if here's where the we can move this back to this pivot right here, and you have your your anchor, your hit, and now this validates right here. If you have the anchor hit, now that you see where the, the blue candle came right up and tagged it and pushed back. The red candle's up there, pushed back. That validates this as a trend line. So it's okay, to, so I'm okay to move this thing over to so now you've got your valid your valid hit your valid trend line and there's a good chance that it's going to come back and retest the c again in the meantime we're trying to uh but we had this is where we got the alert so we had the d down here and what it did was it this is still valid but you can also see that this is where our target was once we got the break And it still might make it and may not, but you also see that this area right here is this candle right here is below this, and that still validates the trend line. But we got in a little bit earlier based on our on our alerts, the alert that we had. And so now I would expect that if it comes back into the wedge and can't break through again to go to the upside, and it's probably a good chance it's going to come down here and retest this. But we have our three hit here. We have an anchor. Here's a hit. Here's a hit. And right now, this thing's all the way over. There's, we already validated the bottom one. And now we've, we've revalidated the top one. And the price will move somewhere in between. You can see on the 15 minute chart, like right now, we had the crossover of the 1362 on the crossover, which is a, a 
significant crossover. We had the, at the alert, we had the test of, the, of this area right here where they crossed over. And now it's a question of how high up is it going to go? This would be a, a zone that would be probably to come back in to retest this area inside of our wedge, and we'll just see what happens. But we still have a higher high, higher low. Now, if it can break, if it can break this air, this candle right here, oh, let's see, I'll be looking at, um, yeah, if it can if it can break the low that was produced down here, where the now we then we're going to have a lower a low with a lower low and a lower high, and that could start trending on, that's where it could start trending on down. And you'll probably find some other secondary wedges inside you to see if it's gonna come and retest this or if it's gonna come back up. But this is, this is, the, this is the playground where it's, where it's trading right now for, you know, it could be for several hours, it could be trading in this, in this range. Maybe nice we've got some more alerts coming in, but we, that's the last one we had. If we take a look at the Aussie uh, trade, it was at 4.45 this morning, if you're up and about during that period of time. Let me see if we can. Al, yes. just quickly, there's another um, question on that um, UJ, I guess. Okay. Did you enter at 0.849 is the question. Uh, uh, 0.8. The 105.849, I'm assuming, is what they're talking about. Uh, did you enter at uh, 0.849? Oh, um, where did I enter on that one, on the UJ? It was, uh, let's see, let me get on my one-minute chart. Uh, I got in at, it was at, these were all over in here someplace. Um Let's see we had here's the crossover i would i would basically i got in when i'm looking at this red candle i'm looking at the moving averages let me see if i can span this a little bit so we had the moving average we had the convergence of all the moving averages. we had the green yellow white and we had a close above this candle right here so basically, I got in market order right about on, my market order was right at the close of that candle right there. And it took a little bit of a heat on the pullback. We also see, you can see now where you're getting higher highs, higher lows. It's, it's trending. You have a nice little trend going on from here. This respect to the trend line there. And if you look at the top, you also see it's probably going to respect this channel. The bounce, bounce, broke the channel. And now you can see where it started. And you can see right, right now where you can see where it broke the channel on the downside after the. And so now you're looking at possible. Uh, as, as the moving averages cross again, let's see if I can get, my, get this here. So now we have a, a high, a low, a lower high. Actually, here, here was the, here's where it's trending with higher highs and higher lows. Came back down. Now it broke this area right here. It was bouncing off of this area. It broke the trend line. And now we have a strong move down. And now we have a situation where we're looking at, at this type of a scenario. Now we're looking for lower highs and higher lows, or lower, lower highs and lower lows is what we're looking at. Now if it breaks, we'll be looking at coming down to, I and mean, eventually we're gonna be looking at this area down here for, here's our move up and it's trade again it's trading tra trading inside the bait in the major wedge but here's a nice pullback it broke this trend up here 
now the question is, is this going to, is it going to, is this purple line, is it going to hold, it broke it, now as it comes up and retests it, just like we normally now have a uh, test, is it going to, uh, is, it, is it going to break this line right here? That's the question right now. And then we're looking at a possible entry for a close below the B. If it closes below the B, this would be the next area to be looking at coming down to test. Okay, so he's saying, thank you. I'm noticing that there seems to be pattern where entry despite ability to draw wedges is at the top of the supply. Previous one minute candle wick. Is anyone else seeing that too? Um, not sure I understand the question. Notice yeah. that there seems to be a pattern where entry. Um, I'm not sure I understand the question. I said basically what I'm looking, I'm looking for lower high, I'm looking for reversals with where it breaks a trend, which is the higher high, higher low, and it reverses to a lower high, lower low. And the wedge, these, by drawing these triangles, it helps you see where the price action is. Here's a high, here's a low, here's a low. Now the question is, is it gonna break here for a lower low or is it gonna come back in reverse to have this whole area be the, the new uh, target area? This this tells me this might just if this thing closes above the C, this tells me this is just a pullback. It's also a retest of this, so we don't know right now. I have to see this thing close inside the wedge with a blue candle above the C area, above this C D line. Because right now, if it just comes up and tags the, this trend line, that tells me that this is still valid, but it got broken, and now it's starting to start a new trend. Okay. Uh, are you seeing the Q&A, Al? He's saying uh, after the alert, go see. to the M1 candle. Uh, the M1 candle prior to the alert. The M1 candle prior to the alert. Um. I guess I'm not totally understanding what he's, where we're getting, what we're trying to. I don't know. Should we unmute him? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let's unmute him and let's see if he can maybe explain it a little bit better for us, because I'm not understanding the question. There you go, uh, Beach Panda. You're able to talk. If uh, that might help us answer your question. Terrific. All right. Thank you. If you go to where the alert came in, go to the can uh, and go down to the uh, the one minute time frame. You know, let me find cursor here. I'm looking. Oh, okay. Here's the alert. One right, minute time alert. frame. Well, the one minute time frame to the yep. can just prior to the alert at the one minute time frame. Right here. Let me move this. Uh, on, on your left. Sure. So you're looking about this one right there. Correct. Okay. All right. At the top of that candle would be the wick, would be supply, correct? Of uh, this one right here? Yes. So if I drew a zone. So if you drew, if you, not a zone, but if you just drew a, a horizontal line, it would probably match up with the uh, entry that you had on this. Uh, the entry I had was uh, over, oh wait, it was over here. Uh, right. Yeah, actually that's probably pretty, that's pretty correct. Yeah, I'd say that's, in this case, I'd say that's pretty true. Or I say the yeah. I mean, I would be, I would probably be looking more like this candle right here to reference it. But yeah, I mean, I, I think either way, that's probably probably valid. Now, th in this particular case, I don't know if that always holds true. I couldn't tell you that. But in this case, this is where the movement. With, I, the, I was, new, with the new wedges that are or the additional wedges that are being drawn, because the Hawkeye is so precise, um, and and trying to get in as early as possible, but as doing it as logically and intelligently as we can without, uh, I guess, with minimizing risk, uh, it looks to be that's where your, your, that's where your entry is. 
about the same point. Yeah. What I'm, what, the way I would probably look at this uh, for myself, the way I would look at this, I'd be looking to see here's like a drop, here's a little basing, then it dropped again. I'd be looking at this whole area right here as a zone that got broken. It came up, retested it, and then it broke through. And then, so this, this there's basically there's a lot of buying and selling activity right in this area. And so basically when this thing came up, it broke, once it, this broke, once this move broke this zone, that means all the buyers and sellers that were in here are now cleared out. So this is, so it no longer plays. Once this gets, once it gets closed out, I mean, it came up and retest, it came down, broke, retested it right here. This came out, retested it. Okay, so there's still some sellers in here that pushed it back down. Once it came back up again, there weren't any more sellers here and the buyers took over. Once that happens, this all goes away. And now we look for another place where the, so like, so now you're looking at, this is where the buyers came in. I would be looking at this area now as where the buyers took over in, down here. And those, this is the new demand zone, which is where the buyers come, came in. Uh, sellers came in, buyers pushed it back up again. That's, so right now you have, let me just make the screen because this is where the buys would be. So this this is still fresh. This is still valid all the way over here. This is still valid. Now, if we look and see where it came back down, it came back. It couldn't come into that. So now we have another what we call level on a level. We have two levels here. It came down, pushed back, and now it broke the top of that. So now this is the next level right in here, this area. And now it came back down. Now, once it breaks the A, we have another level that we can we can draw. And we'll, right now, we don't know what's happening because now we have a lower high and higher lows. Right now, this thing's still in, in play at this point. Once it breaks this part, once it breaks this wedge right here, this is our next target down here. Because this is where price is rejected to go up higher. This is where the, 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 the sellers lost ground. This is where the buyers took over and pushed it all the way back up. Now the sellers are up here. And so as we look and see where, the, which was at the top of the wedge, here's where the sellers, the buyers pushed it up, the sellers took over. Uh, and right now, here's where the battle's going on right in this area. Does that help answer your question? Yes, it does. Okay. This is very so, cool. Yeah, so what I'm looking at right now is that, okay, the sellers took over right here, couldn't get up, but we also know that it was, well, I guess I, yeah, oh, if it, here's where the sellers took over, pushed it all the way back down. Now the buyers are trying to push it back up again. And right now there's a little battle going on here right at this trend line saying, okay, who's going to win? Who's going to win this battle? And right now we don't know the answer to that, but we do know right now that sellers were able to push it back down. Or what's happening is is that there's still more buy orders down here, and there and the big boys are just filling up all the buy orders, and every time it pushes up, when, when the thing about this, it's the the institutional money, the big money, they have they're they're not looking at one or two pips, they're looking at the zone maybe they may be looking at a hundred pips zone for all we know, I don't know what the number is, but what they're doing is they're they're, they're accumulating. If they think this, if they want this thing to go up higher, they're having pe people come in to buy it. And how many people will go and they'll buy right here? The thing is going to break out, and and all the and all that's happening is that the sellers are sitting here because when the buyers are buying, who are they buying it from? Somebody's got to sell it to them. So here's the sellers, and so you have to think of it in in those terms. This, so the big boys are here. Say, so we want to sell because. And as they sell, they keep selling. As, a, as the buyers are coming up to buy it, they're going to sell it. And once it drives back down, well, guess what they're going to do? When people are down here, they're, they're going to be, they're, they're trying to buy right now. They're accumulating. If this thing accumulates, 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 and then once it breaks, well, they're, the buyers, are, they're, trying to, they're trying to take their positions in this area right here to, because they, they know which way they want to take this thing. And so they're probably, if this thing breaks up higher, they're just buying and buying and buying and buying, and they're 
buying from people like you and I. And then once they get once they get all their orders filled to buy, they're going to drive it on up and guess who's and then people are going to start jumping on. And as you as we want to buy as it's going up, well who are they if they bought down here, they're going to, if they bought way down here uh, with the buys and they're going to be they're going to want to be so they're going to drive the price up and as they're driving the price up they're selling to people all the way along the way which is a little bit like what that alexander does and einstein does they're selling to all the people that are wanting to buy and then they go and they bring it back down again so you have to think in those terms this is one reason why i don't like one thing about the wedges are it's basically they're breakout trades but we're breaking out into and this is where we were running into some problems even a couple of weeks ago where we were drawing these wedges and we said, okay, we're gonna wait till it breaks out the top. Well, what we're doing is it's a breakout, but it's a breakout after the move. Why not try and catch the pullback and have a breakout somewhere in between before it actually breaks out? Because now we're accumulating like the big boys are doing, we're accumulating. And then once it breaks, who are we gonna, when it comes up here, who are we gonna sell? Who are we gonna be, uh, we're, now we become sellers because we don't take our profits. So to me, it makes sense to try and get in if this is the area where it's going to be, where we're looking to break, let's try and get, let's try and accumulate down here before it breaks. And then once it breaks, now we can, now we can be the sellers. This is genius. Thank you. Uh huh. And that's pretty much the, that's my philosophy of how I try to trade these things. It's, it was getting pretty frustrating to me, even like a couple of weeks ago, we said, we get the breakout, we get our two or three pips, turn around, and then it would, and then it would start turning out the bottom. Well, so, but now by this time you're so discouraged because, well, I just got stopped out and you come back and you get stopped out again. Well, let's try and find a place inside the wedge, the bigger wedge, try and find a place where everything, where price is accumulating. And let's see if we can catch that little bit before it even gets up there. And then if it breaks, you're already in a great position. Now you can maybe add to your position if you want, or you just take your profits and say, thank you very much. I'm going to go out and work in the yard. Al? Yes. We had a new alert a few minutes ago. Oh, thank you, Eva. I didn't even see it. Uh, New Zealand, U.S. Oh, U.S., yeah. 845, ascending New Zealand. Okay, let's go take a look at that one. Let's put this into a New Zealand chart here. There we go. And let's take this all off, and we're going to play this and see where this one takes us. I'm going to take everything off of here, and we're going to clean it up. Fresh chart, 15 minute chart. Make sure I'm on the right time frame here. Uh, 15, five, one. Okay, we're good there. Take this off. And let me change my pattern here. Uh, let me see, let me change this. AP New Zealand, we said, right? AP chart. Get the right platform up here, New Zealand USD. Let's just take this, take all this stuff off right now. I, right now, I'm, first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look and see where my moving averages are. And I'm seeing I'm getting a crossover of the five. And so we have the 62, the 13 and the five all in right order. So I'm looking at this, it's probably gonna be going to the upside just from a first glance at this thing. It was ascending. So here's my alert, was at 8.45, is that correct, Eva? Eight forty-five ascending, okay. And so I'm looking at this this pivot here. Here's my here's today's action right here. Here's the high today, here's the low today. It's ascending. So I'm just going to start at the extremes here and I'll just work my way in as I can. So ascending, start my A here, move my B up here, bring my C close to where the wedge alert was and bring my D about to where the alert was. Here's an anchor, here's a hit, here's a hit, here's the break, here's an anchor, no hit in the middle. So I can look and bring this on up to here now I have an anchor, I have a hit, 
I have a hit, I have a hit. Validates that, validates this. This is my higher time frame wedge. Boom, there we go. Now we're gonna go to our one minute chart and see what happens. Okay, we're gonna tuck this in a little bit closer here. We're gonna tuck this in a little closer here. That's a blue candle. So right now, we, here was the alert. Uh, the alert actually formed a break of where the D was. So it means this thing's starting to trend up a little bit. That's uh, now we have to figure out what are we gonna do about all this. Anchor, a hit. So validate. Now this one's broken. This trend line's broken. So let's look and see what we can find out where we can maybe where our target may be. If this is a our B or is let's mark this for a potential target. And I'll make this target right here. Okay, so so now we have now we're gonna figure now what we're gonna do about this. Here's the target. Here's we may have already missed this one, possibly. Uh, if we look at our moving average crossover, we got the alert, but here's where the crossovers were. Actually, here was the consolidation to the short side. And here was the break of this area right here. So this is really where we would have liked to have gotten in, but we didn't get the alert until this point. I'd say at this point, I just have to wait for, right now it's starting to trend. We have a nice move up. Here is a little wedge right here, and now it broke that, and it's heading on up. You have to, I can't get into this thing right now. Sorry, we've already missed it. It's, it's, in, this, in this case, we've already missed it. Here's where, the, now, if it could possibly break, if it, if we, we may get a little whipsaw here where it comes back into the wedge, gives our moving average to cross over, and then maybe we have another shot at it. But right now, uh, there was something right up here that rejected big time right there. Let's see if there's a fib line. Uh, there's a fib line right there. Here's our red. Now what we could, now what I may be looking at to do here, let's see where our strength is. And we've got the uh, RCS tool here and it says New Zealand is strong New Zealand is strong, so we, we're looking at a pullback right now. New Zealand's strong over here, and New Zealand is strong on all time frames. So right now we're looking at a retest of the wedge. That's not too bad. So right now we want to be taking this thing to the to the upside. And right now we have a, uh, let's see, here's our D. We already had the trend line. Now we're looking to see what we're going to do about this. What I would be looking at seeing is the consolidation of the moving averages. Maybe get this thing to come back down into this area, give us another moving average crawl where the consolidate to go up higher. Uh, right now I'd be looking at, we have a high, a low. I'm looking for, I'm trying to figure out where a secondary wedge could possibly be on this one. And see, here would be the where the break was, came back up. High, a, a low. I would say a lower high and a higher low, or something like, right now we got a box going on right here. Let's see how low this comes in, if it's gonna come in and tag that. If it tags that, let me spread this out a little bit here. Here's our RSI, is right in the middle? So right now there's no trade right now, other than the fact we could be, it could be make an argument and say it's bouncing off this trend line after it broke, but this could just be the head fake that we oftentimes get caught up in. Al, Rajiv yes. has his hand up. He okay. has a question. Yes, yes. Where is the question? Um, I don't know if uh, Rajiv, can you write the question? I'll tell you what. I can unmute. I can unmute you. There's not that many people in here. We can. Uh, we can't uh, do this. I'm going to allow you to talk. Oop. 
Thank you. Oh, that, oh. oh, S2 unmute. Hello. There you go. Yeah, thank you. So when the EM is crossed, do you consider kind of taking a long position? Like if I see that um, the EM is crossed around what number? What I'm looking for when I see the EMAs cross, like over, like in this area right here where we had the, I, mean, yeah. I don't like this one so well because we actually had the green cross. They're not really here. They're kind of tucked in closer. Right? You can see this where the difference between this this area right here and this one. So I like seeing where the green cross is the yellow, but I also want to see where the green cross is the white. The green one cross. So right in this area, this blue candle right here, where I have the A, I'll just put it right there where the A is. That blue candle crossed, right now we have the price crossed, all three moving averages are all moving up. I'm looking over here to see where's my red candle that's close to that. So I'm going to, let me just take this out of the way here a little bit. So here's the crossover, here's my blue candle. I'm going to be looking at a red candle over here somewhere and say, I want to see a close above that red candle. It's close to where these, now I could be looking at, this one could, would, this one would, would qualify as well too. So actually I'm looking at this red candle and this red candle right over here. This, here's my zone right here. Once I got the close inside that zone and all of my moving averages are now starting, are crossed over and now it's starting up, I'm okay taking it along here but I'm going to see, can I get enough of a target to make it worth my while to take that trade? Because I know I've got this sitting up here. And right. so, we're going to, so we're going to measure this out and say, okay, if I, take, if I take it off of this zone, and I'm just going to arbitrate before he even gets there, say, okay, I'm going to, where's my, I, got, I, can, I can get up here and I can get five pips out of that. And if I get a break of the wedge, which oftentimes you'll, you will, you'll get a break for a couple pips. Well, shoot, now I've got my seven pips. Now I've got 10 pips. Right, and I got right. in down here, and if I, and if I, if it reverses on me, well, I'm still within my seven pip range for my stop. Right. Okay. Right. I got it. Thank you. Uh -huh. And see, like, you can see, like right here, it broke the wedge, but what? How many? What did we? How much did we get out of it? When it broke here, we got. You get filled here, or you get your here to here. You got three pips, so you barely even got break even because you have one one and a half pip spread. Yeah. So right. we're going to try and get in when these cross over. Now, if this thing crosses over here, as it's starting to do, now we're looking at where's our target here. So if we can go, if we can get the crossover using this area as a, I'm looking for a blue candle now, the bottom of a blue candle. Here's the zone right here. I'm going to be looking at this blue candle right here. And I'm going to be looking at uh, probably, hmm, let's see, here's the, we have the cross here. I'm going to see the green, I'm going to see, we've got the yellow and the green crossed right up here. If we get a close below here, let me just redraw this now. Here's here's my red. So here's here's where I'm gonna start drawing the the wedge on this case. If I can draw it. Here's an anchor. Here's here's the bottom of the wedge. Here's the uh, so here's there's a low. Here's a high. Here's a right now. Here's a higher low. But I'm gonna bring this on down to even with where the A is, and then I'm gonna flatten this out. So here's here's my range right now. Now I'm going to see where am I going to get a higher high or a higher low or a lower high or a lower low to break. So right now, here's my low. Right, This is low it is right now. So right now, here's my, here's my wedge as we speak. Now this, this one isn't, this one could still go up and down still. We don't know yet. This is just, I like to keep it flat and see where it, where it lies. Where is my strength? My strength is to the dollar, dollar strength dollars a second currency of the pair. We're looking at this thing to go short. We're getting the moving averages are crossing over inside our our main wedge right now. All right. And here, we're in, now we're inside the wedge. Now we're going to see what happens here. Can we get an early entry to take it down to this side? The dollar is now strong 
on the one minute. Let's see where it is on the. Uh, let's see where it is on the 15. Uh, you can see these the dollars right now. They're fighting. They're pretty much in the middle here. Dollar strong on the five minute. Dollar strong on the one minute. This could be the beginning of a reversal to retest the lower part of the wedge. We had the head fake. Now the question is, is the head fake going to come up and give us another chance to go up higher? Or is it now going to come in? We get the moving averages to cross over to go lower. Right now, we don't really know. But if you look at the 15 minute chart, again, you reference your higher time frame, which in this case is the 15. We put our moving averages on. And let me take this off here so you can see something that I want to show you. This is significant, I think. Let me just take all this stuff off here. And here's a look at our, you see the moving averages are all in the correct direction. We had to bounce off of the 62. The greens crossed over the yellow. We had this thing still trending up. This was the bounce and look at this blue candle reject. This looks, see how this red candle came down and, the, and it just rejected it. So right now, this is a significant level right here. And we're going to mark that. 1562. Price of that 75. Okay, that's pretty close to where it is. And my yellow one, the 13, let's mark that one. Because that was because it came down, this red candle came down, rejected it. It's still a red candle, but still rejected it. So let's mark this. So would you consider this like uh, um, this EMS crossing right now at say? Uh, 67, 66 area, would uh -huh. you consider this as a likely position to go long? Uh, I would agree with that, yes. Because all because our 15 moving averages are all, it's still moving up. It's, they're still trending up and they're still using this for support. We also have to take in consideration that we have this little wick right up here and see where that one is, if there's a anything there not not really so but we have this area right here let me make mark this here and we'll take a look at it on the lower time frame here's the 1513 right there and then here's our right now this right now based on this this is our supply zone just catch the wick it wasn't it hasn't been penetrated yet so that means that there's some sellers up in here make this our red zone Excuse me, Sellers. Al. Yeah. Um, I have to uh, just leave my desk for a bit. I don't know if you want to stop for a break. It's almost 9.15. Oh, uh, yeah, we can. Yeah, let's take a little bit of a break. Well, shoot, here, I can take a break. Yeah, I know you're right in the and, middle of it now. Yeah, anybody wants to take a break, they're welcome. I'm going to stay here and keep working. If anybody wants to take a break, they're welcome to. And uh, I don't know that. I'm afraid we're going to miss something here if we take one right now. You can see this thing's coming right on up in this area. Okay, I'll be back shortly. Okay, all right. Matt, do you have anything you want to add to this? You still here? Yeah, no, I'm still here. Okay. Um, no, I think uh, I think right now we'll just uh, we'll just play it out. I got in this one uh, long anyway, so. You know, I haven't taken this one because uh, I'm not sure what to do with it. But right now you can see where it came down, and here's here's where. Our, as I was drawing this out, here's where the 13 was on the 15-minute chart. Here's where the 62 was on the 15-minute chart. And you can see how the C is pretty much where that C was. That's probably where this thing, it bounced right off of that. So right now, it's coming up and retesting this area. Once it, if this can break this area, but you can see how this thing pulled back and it made a, and now it, uh, it broke but it's also broke right in here, right up in where that wick was, where we have that supply area. It still has to get through that. Once it get, if, if it can get through that, come over here, which is where the B was, um, the question is where is it, where does it go now? I see nothing over here to stop it, but let's take a look at it. Now I'm gonna be looking at a higher time frame to see where the next target is. If this red area doesn't hold, Let's see where the next target is. Now I'm going to go to a higher time frame. I'll start with the one hour chart. Still nothing for 
one, two, three, four, five days back, it's still nothing over here. So one of two things we're looking at either, let's go to a four hour, still uh, nothing, I don't think. Let's go to a daily, nothing. So right now I'm looking at this as a high, it hasn't, it hasn't reached this high since April, since way before April. Let's see where it was, or if it was, it was just new, new highs. Let's go to weekly. Now, all right, now we finally have some candles. So from a weekly standpoint, right now, where the price is right now, it's in a zone from a weekly chart where well, this is where the sellers were. This is all the way back in July of last year. So my guess is is that it's it's uh, it's got some work to do to get through this. I had to go all the way back to July of 2019 to be able to find anything that you, and it it broke this one, and now it's into this zone right here. Let's go back to our 15 minute chart and see what that looks like. I do not expect, I think it's gonna run, have a little bit of problem getting through this area right here. And if it does, then we're looking at it going up, probably this will be the target up here. But right now we're in a, a supply zone that was generated back over a year ago. I can move this thing up, I can move this thing up. And so I would be, I mean, your, your profit margin to this area right here is pretty slim once it breaks through that. Um, and that's about the only time, that's the only reason I usually go to those higher time frames is trying to find out where the targets are. And you're seeing right now it came up, it's a nice strong move up. It's got a little wedge right here. Let's see what, so we have, we had the secondary wedge off, it broke the main trend line. So now it's broken. Now it's heading on up to make some new highs from, at least for this year anyway. But it's gotta get through this area right now. And that was just based on this 15 minute chart of what, put that right into that area right there. There's the wick of where the B is. That's where I started this whole thing uh, from probably yesterday's high. Now, once it broke this, how much pip, how many pips did we get uh, if we got this break here? That's only four pips so far. Here's five pips. We have seven pips. To, so we may be able to get our five to seven pip for the target here. But we also, now we're starting to get some hooks. Now the question is, what's it gonna do? New Zealand is uh, on the one minute, New Zealand is strong, so that's to the upside. But look at that rejection. So right now we, we did make a higher high, low, higher low. Now the question is, is it going to break the C? If it breaks the C, now we could be looking at coming down here. It's also, we have our 15 minute 13, which is gonna to have to retest that. One minute we're getting the moving averages are starting to, see that right now we had consolidation here before the break. This one's still down pretty far. This could just be a rally, little wedge here for another run on up to break through this. It pulls back to, there's our 38% retracement. So here would be the target, which would be just past this area. Could wake up, take this one out, come up here and then just either keep going or, but I'd be looking at it possible. If this thing breaks this little wedge that we got right here, then I'd be looking at this for the target up in that area.
And right now, one thing I like about this triangle tool, I'm going to change those colors because this is a different time frame that we're looking at now. What they like about this is you can go and you can get a hit here, hit here, and just draw. Now, if it breaks, question is, is it going to give us a higher high? Is it going to break? This is a red candle, but it's engulfing. See how it's engulfed that? I can bring this thing on up to this area and bring this over to here. This red candle right now, everything is inside that red candle. Well, actually, I actually had a little bit of a break down below. I should get a good. There we go. Now just take this right, square that off at the top. It does, have, it does seem to have a little bit of a strength to it. Let me see if I can look at another chart here. This is the New Zealand USD. Okay, it took this one out. That one's done. It came right up into now. We have a new, it came right up into that retracement zone. But now it's still making it. Here's a high, a low, higher high, higher low. Now just made it a higher high. It won't be a higher low till it makes, I can't, uh, yeah, let's see. I can move this over because now I made a new high, but I can't move my lower low until it pulls back and then makes another new high. Start off, here's the low, here's the high, higher low, higher high. I can move this over higher low, now that this made it a higher high, now I can move this up to this one for a higher low. And I can actually move this one over now too. Came right up, rejected it, right at that point it rejected it. And you've had your set, you probably have gotten your seven pips on this move. Yep, you could have had your seven pips. And now the question is, are we going to get a lower low here? We had the higher high. Now the question is, is it going to break this? C. It's going to retest the 15, the 13 period on the 15 minute chart. Strong rejection. Yeah, that was pretty strong. That single one minute candle just swallowed the last seven candles, right? Yeah. Five, oh, it's six candles, yeah. And keep in mind, you're in a supply zone right now that was generated back July of last year. So this is a, this is a new high for this year's high. Now the question is, is it going to keep making new highs based on what's happening in the world today with the dollar? Or is it going to say, well, okay, I'm going to start rejecting.
So anyway, I stayed out of that trade. It would have been a nice, it, 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 we did get the break. I, what I didn't like about it was that she had the, it was after the, we had the crossover before the alert. And my D was actually over here then at the time. We see how the this Fibonacci tool where it came up is like here's your first move, 38% pullback, came up, hit your one to one target, and then it came back and now it's re retesting this area. My gut is telling me that this is gonna because it's such an extreme move, it needs to pull back and who who knows how far that pullback's gonna be, but it's probably gonna find its way up. With the way that uh, the market's been moving in the last couple months, everything's blowing through the roof, right? Or going right down the hole. Yeah, the uh, the dollar's been all over the place the last month, which I mean it's good for volatility. Now I just want to keep in mind that at ten o'clock today, there's a ISM manufacturing PMI, which I have no idea what that means, but it's a red folder, so we need to pay attention to it, and it's for the U.S. dollar. So you may want to uh, be careful trading anything uh, till after 10 o'clock or before 10 o'clock as we are only 30 minutes away from that. So you're gonna get some strong moves before and after that. So you just be careful. I'm pretty much done now taking my trades for that. I had a nice trade with that uh, US Yen. So I'm, I made my daily targets, so I'm good for the day. Anything I take here will be just demo to practice. But right now, this is like a nice little pullback. You have the hook. We didn't make a lower low. Here's my A. Here's my C. So now we have still a higher low so far. Flat yeah, that could, be, uh, that could be that could be looking pretty nice. All right, but we're also looking at, um, right now, I'd be looking to see the moving averages to consolidate and then decide whether or not it's gonna to break to the downside or break to the upside. But right now you're right in the middle. You're still above the main wedge. We're still in the supply zone. And we don't know if it's done breaking through that or not. It could, this could very well make a, a yearly high. It's not beyond the realm of possibility, but I don't, I'm not one to try to predict. Just let the charts tell me what it's gonna do. Yeah, when you start predicting, uh, it it really creates an internal bias, right? And can really mess up with the with the trading. At least in my experience, yeah. I, I try not to predict where it's going to go because I can convince myself that it's going to go up, or I'm going to convince myself that it's going to go down. Yeah, and you were very, and we were we we're all very good at having our minds up. Uh, if we if we start making an opinion about that, we start our minds start telling us exactly what we want to see, and it may not really be what the charts are telling us. No, we can justify anything. The, the big thing is to try and get a system where you trade like a robot. You try and trade with the same. You're looking for the same picture, and if you don't get the picture, don't take the trade. And uh, so, in this case, is that my picture is is that I want to see. I want to be able to see the crossover of the moving averages inside the wedge. Or if I see that's trending, then maybe catch it off so it keeps on trending. But right now it's out of the wedge. It's, it's starting to trend. I don't know which direction it's going to, because I know I'm right now I'm in a, I know I'm in a supply zone. So for me, this picture does not justify me taking the trade. Over here, when we had the crossover, we we're already at the top of the wedge and I didn't really know, I mean, this would have been the candle to be able to take it off after the alert. But we, and we had the crossover. But on the same token is I didn't have enough room to the top of the wedge to, I wasn't sure about the strength. Plus all my RSIs are right up here at the top waiting for that hook. Now when it hooked, it came back down and then it hooked up again. That was probably the area. You see, well, here you see where it broke up and came right back down. Now here is, here is where the, 
better entry would have been. And you also had the crossovers again over here. And so we wait. Any other questions on this? Okay, we've got a question from Beach Panda. I okay. recently heard that the best rationalization to use BTE strategy to use is one based upon why the trade should not be taken. Then if there isn't enough reasons, it's okay to cautiously take the trade. Yeah, I Agreed, 110%. Yeah. If yeah. you get to a point where you can disqualify your trade, then you know what you're doing. There's no look. There's no luck. There's no, like, it's just, hey, it doesn't look like it. I'm not pulling the trigger. Guess what? You don't lose the trades that you don't, that you don't take. You lose opportunities. But on the same token is that uh, there's always going to be another train coming down the, down the road. And, uh, I mean, you can talk yourself out of almost any trade. You know, so you have to be careful not to over overanalyze. But just know what you're looking for. And if it fits the criteria, uh, take the trade. But you are start, I mean, you're not going to win every trade. And you, don't, you also don't want to get to the point where you don't want to be taking trades because you're afraid of uh, – but you, th th that's part of the trading game is to know uh, what your style is, does it fit your style, and then, uh, then, then go for it. And also know you're not going to win every trade. There's going to be a lot of there's setups that I say – it looks like a good setup, but they still don't win. And that's, you're not going to win, you're not going to win them all. But you want to be somewhat dis, uh, disqualified. You want some things, that's, you want to see certain things be there before you take the trade. And if they're not there, you just don't take it. Uh, my thing right now is I'm looking to see the crossover of the moving averages inside the wedge and have enough room to at least get, to at least get my stop and my spread out of it before it breaks. Right now, this is a nice, and my other uh, disqualifier is, what's my strength? What's the strength on my, uh, on my tools? Is it, uh, is it dollar strength or is it New Zealand strength? If so, what is the, uh, what is the spread on it? And we had a nice little pullback here. Now, with this pullback, this could be the next target. This could be the target that we could up, it come up and retest this target area. Uh, and again, what's the, how much room do we have? If it does, if we do try to take it long again, do we have enough room? Well, that's four, that's a 14 pip move. So yeah, there's enough room to the upside, but also this is a strong pullback and starting looking like it. It just broke through the yellow, and it's uh, retesting the top of the original wedge, the, the orange one. It's retesting the top of that. Now we're going to just see it. Now, how deep is this thing going to go? Right now, we ha we now have a. Uh, right here is a. We have a lower. We have a lower low, but it's not closed, and it's right here at the wedge. So right now we have a. This is going to be a battle going on right here, top of the wedge that it broke. It's retesting it. It just broke through the fifteen thirteen, a fifteen minute thirteen moving average. We have the sixty two down here. So if this thing breaks. We still have to figure out, is it going to be enough room to bounce off of here? Is it going to bounce off of there to bounce off the bottom of the wedge? My guess is it's going to probably bounce off the bottom of the wedge. And then you might have an opportunity to take it long again. Or the fact it's rejecting this whole sell zone from a year ago, and now it's going to come back and start uh, making, uh, retesting where it came from. I don't like playing around with higher time frame zones. Once they're broken, and then this, then you know where the next one is. But right now, this is a pretty strong area to have to get through, as you're seeing it with this rejection right now. So right now, it's made a. It hasn't made a lower low reference to C. It did did break the A, which is our secondary wedge. So this one's gone now. Now the question is: Is it did our moving averages? Uh, or they consolidate it. We have a, this was a strong move, and you can see where this was the this blue candle right here was the blue candle, the the, the body of the blue candle, where the crossover came, and then we had the had the close. So right now, this is turning into a short. 
based on the moving averages, but you also know that it's going to have to break through here. And if it does break the C, well, now where's it going to go from there? And we have to look all the way over here, and we have this area right in here. Get to, now this is on a one minute, are we still on the one minute chart? Yes. I'd rather find an area on the 15 minute. You change the color of this to cell entry. We have all these, these are all the wicks. Here's a close, it was rejected. This area was rejected. Once this closes below all these wicks, here's where it's gonna go. Here's probably where it's gonna go right in this area right in here. Nice big blue candle coming up. Here's the origin of that candle. Here is where the moving averages crossed over the last time on the 15 minute. You could probably justify saying, okay, this is the area that we're looking at between here for a target. And the zone that we're looking at on the 15 minute is the base of this blue candle and the, uh, oops. And then where the wicks stop right here. So if this breaks, this would be the target area. And how many pips is that? It goes from uh, 67.58 to 67.48. You've got 10 pips if we get the break. And right now you can see where it bounced right off of the 62. It needs to close below the, that's, uh, I'd, like, I'd see it get a close below this blue candle. See how it's doing on a one minute. So right now on uh, the dollars, the dollars taking over the lead for the strengths. That's to the downside. That's because of this big move down. But right now it's still, my guess it's going to stay in this zone for a little while. So I'm just going to stay away from that uh, for the trade. You hear me taking trays over here. This is something else I'm working on. I'm working on a beta test for. These are not trades. If you hear me, I say if you hear me taking trades, it's because it's something else, not what I'm talking about here. And so we wait. So right now we're on the 15 minute. Let's go back to our one minute chart. And see how things are playing out here. We're back inside the wedge. Here's my A. Here's my hit. Here's my trend. Here's another hit. This validates the trend line right here. And I think what's probably going to happen is you're going to be, it's going to be trading inside this box that I'm going to draw right now. Probably going to be trading between here and here. Lots of room, actually. There's uh, 79 to... 56, so that's 20, 20 some pips range. 
it each brought the, answer it, to your question. Al uses um, 62, 13, and 5 um, for those indicators, the MAs. And Al, maybe you can just verify this. He's got 15 13. It's showing on his one minute chart, but that would be the 13 EMA on a 15 minute chart. Is that correct? That is correct. Yeah, that's just uh, just so I know where my uh, 13 period EMA on the 15, where is, where is lying on the one minute chart? That's, yeah, that's exactly right. 15 minute, this is reference to the 15 minute chart, 13 EMA is what that is. As in the other one was a 15 minute time frame with the 62. Uh, exponential moving average. Because you'll see where those things, this thing will be, you see like right now it broke the 13 on the way down. So right now it's kind of back into, that was a major, that's a major bounce point. If it's, and when these things are start trending, these are the, when it's, you look at this 15 minutes, you see where it trended from where it came, where you had the crossover on this 15 minute chart, you had the crossover and you can see how it followed this yellow 15, 13 EMA all the way up until and it had a little bit of a pullback and then, but right now this has all been violated. It's been violated now the second time, but you see where the 62 is holding, it's holding, it's following all the way up. This was, came down, tested it, pushed back up. Testing it again, push back up. So you've got some support right in this. You've got buyers in this area right in here. And if you look and see from the 15-minute chart, if you want, you can take this box and you can move it up a little bit actually, to the where these wicks are. Put it right down at the lowest body of the of all these candles, and then you take this down to where the this big extended range candle here at the body of that. This is your new zone. It's going to have to get through all this before it's going to come any, get any lower. <clears throat> this is the origin of where this big move started. You have a nice big candle here, and actually the origin the origin is actually way down here. And you know you have very you do have a little wick right on this red candle right here. You have a little bit of wick, but this is the area where it, it hasn't been breached yet. Once this goes, it's probably going to come all the way down. The next zone that I'd be looking at would be this one down here. And it'd be this series, this series of wick, this wick right in here. That'd be the next area I'd be looking at if this one breaks. But right now it's just basing inside of this area. It's, right now it's, it's going sideways. Right now from from here to basically here, it's just going, it's just all sideways. You can even take it over a little bit, even more. This is the range of straight and it's, in a, it's just going sideways. It's basing before it had a nice move up. It's going sideways inside this range. Did extend it just a little bit. But if you look and see where the bodies of the candles are, you see like right now it's made a new it has this is the highest close right here. This is the highest close. And now you have another little red zone inside this other zone. This is where it's put this is the playground right now between this red area and the green area. That's the playground. So there's really no real trend going on, even on the one minute, that's on the 15 minutes. So if you look at the same area on the one minute, let me just take all these off right now since the wedge is already done. If you look and see where the crossovers are between here, you're only you're looking. By the time you get the crossovers, you're back up into the zone. By the time you get the crossover down, you're back into the zone. Now, can you get? Could you get uh, from this candle down? Could you get your five pips? Possibly. Let's see. 
you know, you got 15 pips to the downside. So if you get these crossovers of the of moving averages and you're only looking at getting up into the red zone or the green zone, now you maybe I'll get a few more pips out of this thing as it's going sideways. But this is an area, and again, know that you're in a very high time frame. Uh, you're in a week. You're actually in a weekly time frame supply zone. Any other questions? Then we'll see if we get any more alerts. Am I confusing anybody, or is it helping, or is it more confusing? Anybody? Give me a show of hands. Okay, let's see. Let's take the uh, lower the hands or lower lower hands. Give me a show of hands. How many people are more confused? Well, that's good. How many people are understanding this? Each panda says, let me yeah. watch this a few times, then I'll let you know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, I says it's so uh, sometimes it's hard from this end to gauge whether or not I'm confusing people or I'm making things more clear. It's hard to say sometimes. Well, Leslie says I'm with Beach Panda. So <laughs> okay. well, as he says you the Best thing I can say is to ask questions. Um, I said I can always unmute your mics and you can uh, speak up and ask questions. Then maybe I can help clarify things. Yeah, that's true. You, you you don't know what you don't know, and uh, as as the more you're in the room, the more you uh, see what we're doing. And uh, I try to be as consistent as possible. I do make some changes as I see changes uh, necessary, or well, changes would improve things. But I usually try and uh, make it clear before I do, so that you're not totally totally lost or thinking that I'm recreating the wheel. I try not to recreate the wheel. I just try to improve on it a little bit. But we're basically just trying to teach price action analysis. We have to get the wedge alerts and just trying to teach the price action analysis and, and using trend lines is basically what the whole theory of this is, is using trend lines to determine bounce points and target areas. Another uh, comment from Beach Panda. The additional wedges is something I still need to get my head around. Yeah. Especially since they're not anchored on the alert. So I, I understand that part, Beach Panda, because it's almost like um, the original alert, the original wedge, but it's it's a bit of a deeper dive, I suppose, into um, how price is moving. Yeah. And I have the same issue. I have to get my head wrapped around that too. So you're not alone. <laughs> yeah. yeah I, I, part of the thing is with the alerts is one thing about the alerts in general is that there's an algorithm that says this uh, price action is giving us a wedge alert, a, a wedge. And what it does is this, uh, take a look at this chart because we have an alert. Doesn't mean you take the trade, but we have, it's fitting the criteria that is developing a wedge. Now it's up to us to discern, determine how to draw that. Uh, they did say something about they were going to be showing us uh, they was going to start drawing the wedges for us, but I have yet to see that, and I'm not so sure how that's how that would play out. But there are certain times today where you'll see the price action is a little bit uh, more uh, conducive. But the biggest thing that I look at a lot of times, I can see I want to see a nice big move down, and then I want to see that lower high, higher low at the end of it. And that tells me whether or not it's going to continue on down or if it's going to turn around and go back to the upside. Um, 
you can look at almost any chart and see that whether it's a, a U.S. pair or a Euro yen pair or whatever you want to look, you can look and just you just look at the chart and say, okay, there's a nice move down. Here's a little flag pattern. We had a nice move. It's coming back. It's making little mini lower highs and higher lows. And then you say, okay, here's like just looking at this right now, this is a little wedge pattern right here. Strong move down. We had a little drop, a base, a drop, a come back. It's retesting this area with a little wedge pattern. So now the question is, is this going to be a nice little pullback to retest this area here? And if so, can I get my seven pips out of it? From, let's say we get it low from here to here. Yep, we can still get our seven pips before it comes into this zone. We're getting the moving averages are crossing over. We had it crossed over to the downside. Now it's looking to try and maybe cross over to the upside. Which way is it going to go? I don't know. But we have nice move down here. On it, And again, you're on the one minute chart. Here's a little wedge right in here. Dropped again. If it's, this thing comes up, it's going to be retesting this area. So here's your low. Here's your low. Oh. Actually, here is a, there's a low. Here's a high. And here was a another low that we, and then here was. Now, if I draw, actually, if I take this area and bring it on across, flatten it out at the bottom, you see where it broke. It broke where the A was. Now, the other thing is, is you, I'm looking to see is there another series of wicks that I could use for a reference? Well, I look over here. Here's one I could use. And that means I could move my C over here. And I could say, well, there's an anchor, there's a hit. Is there something else over here that might work? Well, here's a little red candle there. So now I've got an anchor. Well, there's a hit. There's a hit. Validates my trend line. Came up, broke down, came back, retested the, the wedge right up here. And now we have another trend line coming from down here to this area. There's an anchor. Here's a hit. Here's a hit. There's my third hit. If this breaks, we can try to take it short. Here's our consolidation of our moving averages. If it breaks below this blue candle, we can take it short and see what happens. Let's try it. I'm going to go short. If I can get in here in time. So let's just market order it right there. And you can also see where anchor, hit, hit, three, three points validates it, got a, a break, come back, this blue candle here again revalidated, the, re made a new validation of this trend line. We have the moving average cross, and we're actually looking, trying to look for a break below and close below this blue candle. Here's the valid, here's the anchor, here's the hit. Now we'll see what happens in here. This may have been a little bit premature because I didn't get the close. But this trend line, the yellow one on the wedge is valid. The break of the purple one is valid. And so far is still, and we have our moving average cross. Here's our zone where I'd like to see the close. I didn't get the close in there. I was a little premature on that. But the 62 on the one minute, that held. 
It got breached a little bit, but it held so far. There's your hit. There's the hit. Here's your wedge. Moving averages are all in the right direction. Let's see if we can get anything out of this one. If not, our stop is way up here. Our stop is, we have a seven pip stop. And a seven pip target. The stop is way up here. Well, we're not going to give it all that. We're not going to make it, we're not going to give it that much room. We take it all the way to the top where the B is. It's still going to be, that's still within this 9.8 pips. Still not bad for a stop. I'll probably be out of it before then because you'll probably get the moving average crossovers before then. Another two minutes, we'll have a new uh, one hour candle. So we'll do a 15 minute candle in another two minutes. <clears throat> Let's see where it is on a 15 minute chart. Since we're gonna get a candle close. Take this off and so we can see a little clearer. Yeah, some interesting candle activity on NZD USD, yeah? Yeah. That's, uh, it just looks out of place. But this blue candle is about ready to close another 39 seconds. And that's basically an engulfing red candle. Or this candle is going to be engulfing this red candle. It's engulfing this one. So right now our range is going to be, this 15 minute range is right here. Which is about what we said before. Let me take this one off. Yeah, look at that. Right at, the one hour, one, <laughs> right at the one hour close. Major target. Came right down into the green zone that we figured out. We have a level and a level. So it would not surprise me for it to break this level and come back and test this one. That was substantial. Yeah, that was right at the when the hour when the candle closed. It was engulfing a nice blue candle engulfing. So that was, I'm not sure what, exactly what that means, other than the fact that it's uh, it developed a range for us, and then it just broke out, and now it came right down into this demand zone. 
it held. Now the question is probably going to go ahead and uh, now it may come back and retest where that uh, other area was. But you already just made your target. And now we start and wait for another one. But this is all off the same alert. Let's see, did I lose my original wedge here? I think I did. Yeah, I did. I took it off when I drew up those two zones. But you see, like right now, it's still trading inside the red zone and the green zone. If this one breaks, this is going to be the next one to be looking at. I hope some of this is making sense. Nice move down, nice little flag pattern coming up. Broke the wedge, broke the bottom of these of this new trend line. But you see how that had we had a high, a low. Do a little bit of a wedge, just came up and worked a little bit more. All within this, this zone. Yeah, this moved down, a little flag, it broke it, came back, retested this zone. If you look at this zone right here, it retested that in that area. Then it made a new low. Now it's probably gonna make another new low. And if we look at this flag pattern here, Take our extension tool from up here to the low, bring it up to the high. And here's our one to 78 to one area right in here is where I had a target. And we're gonna put a target, that, here's our zone. 78 to one. Right you there. see how the uh, moving averages are separating eh, after the cross. So that means it's a pretty strong switch in momentum. You also have the uh, whole moving average, everything flipped short, right? Yep. And if you want to follow this one now in the one minute, you can you can see where this came up. It didn't even touch these yellow ones. So right now the yellow one is a controlling moving average. This zone is about ready to be broken, and then we have this one down here, and this is right in the middle, right between the two. This, this, this just got broken. A little bit of a wick down there. Buyers came in. Then we have about 10 more minutes before we're going to close the session down. Uh, time for the last few minute questions or comments. Did anybody grab some pips today? I did. <laughs> did I, got about, uh, I got about seven. Good stuff. It's all just a matter of being able to learn how to read the charts, see what it's doing, have certain tools that we use to give us confirmation. But we're basically just looking at you know, price action and, uh, and trend lines is pretty much what it boils down to. And on that note, I think what we'll do is we'll go and uh, since everybody's probably had enough for one day, I think we'll close this thing up. Thanks everyone for being here and we'll see you tomorrow.
at the same time. Appreciate you guys. Take care. And Matt, if you have, and Matt, if you have time, can you come into the 888? Yeah, I'm just going to make breakfast and then uh, let's okay. say maybe an hour or so. Okay. All right. Yeah, we'll be, we'll be here. All right. We'll do that. All right. Thanks. Bye. Bye, everyone. Have a great day. I <laughs> think